The views and opinions expressed on this show are not meant to be used as medical advice. Consult your doctor before implementing any health or exercise changes. The Fire Within encourages you to do your own research and aims to spark interest and motivation to a healthier lifestyle. The Fire Within Podcast. You need a sustainable plan, the right mindset, and the knowledge and inspiration to stoke the fire within. Just like the Phoenix, you can burn your old habits, never turn back, and emerge completely anew. There are no shortcuts. Welcome, Fire Within community. This is the Fire Within Podcast, where we talk about all things health, fitness, and nutrition related. I'm your host, Brandon, with my co-host, Joe. Hello. What up, Joe? I don't know much. Just got back from a cruise. Waterlogged. Trying to <laughs> sober up. Big alcohol log. <laughs> How was it? It was good, man. It was a lot of fun. Four day trip out of Charleston. Easy peasy. Super relaxing. Nice. Yeah, it was great. Soaking up the sun before a fall and winter get here. Yeah, I only really spent one day at the beach and then I tried to avoid the sun. I just don't want a sunburn. Like, I yeah. just, I'm not a fan. Miserable if you get it. So I've been burnt twice real bad to where I had to go to the hospital. Ooh, that's never been yeah, never it, been that bad. And I don't blister. I get something less than 1% of the population is capable of getting called hell's itch. <laughs> and essentially what happens is the sun fries the nerve endings and the synapses get all messed up. And it feels like you're getting stung every time you get an electrical impulse. It's super horrible. Wow. Pe- people commit suicide from it. Typically, this sensation can last 48 to 72 hours, solid. You don't typically sleep through it. Sometimes cold shower can dull it for a little bit, but then it comes back and you start ripping your hair out. That sounds terrible. Yeah, it's horrible. Hell's itch. Yep. Yep. Just put me out like if I had that. I'll see you in three <laughs> days. Just put me down. <laughs> Feed me through a tube. Yeah, most doctors don't really know how to treat it or exactly what it is, but there's the thing with all rare diseases. Yeah. There's just not enough research or expertise because there's so many diseases. Like you can't be an expert in everything. Yeah. So I like it for an hour, but I do getting sunlight throughout the day, not on the beach frying like a lobster covered in (laughs) butter, but, uh, but I do enjoy the beach. I love walking on the beach. We get the grounding effect we've talked about on the show. Yeah. Um, I just don't like to sit out there for hours upon hours. But summer is coming to an end. Yeah, man. And we get to experience something we haven't for a long time where we live, which is a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Because <laughs> typically in the summer, we're hitting heat indexes over 100 degrees. and It's heat, been a warm one, too. Uh, yeah, it really has been. So, which kind of brings us to the topic of the show, seasonal affective disorder. Sad, for short. And Appropriately named disorder. <laughs> Just makes me sad. Yeah. An offshoot of this sad thing. Now that I have a baby, I'm thinking about things like life insurance and trying, to, right. fi- yeah, I'm trying to figure out how adulting. Much I need. Adulting. All those things. You were asking me what kind I had, and I don't really remember. My brain doesn't hold on to important information, what kind of life insurance I have, but I do remember dumb stuff. If you watch Cheers and then Frasier back to back, you've got 24 years of Frasier Crane playing... <laughs> <laughs> by Kelsey Grammer. <laughs> That's funny. When we're talking about insurance, I often think back to a clip that I saw on David Letterman. Like I was 19 years old and I still remember it as one of the funniest things I think that I saw on the Letterman show. But there was this bit before like in Practical Jokers, David Letterman would make Biff Henderson, his segment producer, put in an earbud and say whatever David Letterman told him to say. So Letterman would be back in the studio. He'd send Biff out on assignment and he would just put him in a limo and have him say dumb stuff and insulting people and stuff like that. Anyways, there's this bit where Biff is riding around, I think in a limousine and he's looking out the window and Letterman sees a guy jogging and he's, he said, ask the guy, what are you doing? Biff yells out, what are you doing? And the guy says, jogging. He says, doesn't matter. You're going to die anyways. <laughs> <laughs> and we were talking about insurance is one of this very ironic thing where you're just rooting to waste your money. Absolutely. Like I sure do hope I don't need this. <laughs> Absolutely. I hope I pay this for years and never need it. Yeah. <laughs> my, my other favorite David Letterman segment was, is this anything? Oh yeah. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> they would have somebody do something on stage and the audience decided, is this anything? <laughs> it could be the most random nonsense. <laughs> The new stuff is pretty good. I like Jimmy Fallon. I think he does some really fun stuff, but I do miss Letterman. Yeah, Letterman was always my, he was an icon. When it was I back though when people had TV. Like we used to watch TV at night from the air. Wow. <laughs> it would come <laughs> into an antenna. Yep. Yeah. Now it's a Netflix is primarily for yeah. us. We don't okay. even have a TV plugged in. I kind of like the on-demand nature of it. Yeah. Yeah. I like not having to sit through commercials. That's nice. 
Although, how will I know the latest flavor of Yule Play? That's true. No, cotton candy. It ties back in what we're talking about, which is the sun goes down, the weather starts to change. This is probably more of a winter thing, but the seasonal affective disorder, that has an effect on our mood. Absolutely. But maybe we will, I think some people try and pacify that with more TV. <laughs> yeah. But there's all kinds of things we can do to help lower that effect. And just to kind of give some background information on seasonal affective disorder. A lot of people can get it fused with regular depression, but there is a difference. So the major depression is a disease in which your brain's pleasure responses are broken, and you may have a loss of appetite, fatigue, trouble sleeping, and feelings of hopelessness. If that's year round, that's depression. And depressed people oftentimes have a harder time managing their symptoms in the winter. But when depressive symptoms are only affecting you in the winter, it's considered seasonal affective disorder. So it's specific to the time of year. It's not all year long. And lots of Americans experience this and all around the world. And that was, I'm on the Wikipedia page. That was recently reclassified. It didn't used to be that way, but basically it's now reclassified as a, instead of a, a mental disorder. Now it's a seasonal pattern, which means it will completely go away and then come back kind of like yeah. perennial plants. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that wild? Now there's a couple things we can do. There's a, there's actually a really fantastic article from hopkinsmedicine.org that has a, kind of a short list. And then I want to elaborate on this and give some other uh, things to help as well. But one of the things that contributes to seasonal affective disorder is unrealistic holiday expectations. Huh. So whether it's having the best Halloween costume right. and going trick or treating, have this amazing time, and or then I've had just... a bad year, this Christmas has to be perfect. Exactly, and, and then we see all these Hallmark movies, which are completely unrealistic. But what are all the Hallmark memes where it's like, no, I don't remember. I don't know. There's something delightfully predictable about them. I don't mind a Hallmark movie around Christmas time. <laughs> Absolutely. You know what's going to happen? It happens. Yeah. The end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, I wonder if it's harder for people. I'm sure if they're in and out of a relationship around that time, it makes it really tough. But sometimes even regardless of that, it just that time can be pretty tough. So it can be related to where you live again here on the Wikipedia page for seasonal affective disorder. If you're like, oh, this can't have anything to do with weather. 1.4% of the population in Florida have seasonal affective disorder and 9.9% .9 of people in Alaska have it how about that <laughs> let's talk about that joe so it's absolutely got to be the weather and alaska's weird it's dark for a week exactly which brings us to our next topic circadian rhythm based on where you are to the equator and the amounts of sunlight you get and the amount of those rays you get it has a tremendous impact on vitamin d and serotonin because vitamin d is a precursor to serotonin so the less natural light exposure you have the more likely you are to either have seasonal affective disorder, full-blown depression. And we've done an entire episode on stress and sleep way at the beginning with tons and tons of tips and information on that. But since today's focused on seasonal affective disorder, I did think it was mentioning part of what causes is that shift of the earth in its orbit. It's the amount of sunlight we get, those longer nights, uh, shorter days, we are getting less exposure. So I think one of the best things you could do to combat it is be intentional, uh, especially in the morning time when the sun's uh, giving the best types of rays, maybe around 9 a.m., either getting exposure through a window, better yet would be if you can get outside for 15 or 20 minutes. I'm sure if you live like in Indiana, it's going to be harder because it's going to be like a blizzard all the time. But, but that sunlight exposure is the number one best thing you can do to combat that. And if that's just not realistic or going to happen, they make lights, they make ear pods that can simulate that type of blue wavelength that we would get from the sun, which actually is used for people that travel a lot on planes to different time zones to help keep their circadian rhythm in focus. And what would those lights be called? That's light therapy. What kind of lights are you looking for? Light therapy boxes, anything that mimics outdoor light is going to be a good cho a choice, usually an exposure of 10,000 lux which is a measurement of light. So we're looking for 10,000 lux, and that can be helpful. They make lights that attach to alarm clocks, and so it mimics the sun, where it gets brighter and brighter as it's time for you to wake up. Those are cool. There's actually all kinds of options, but looking for 10,000 lux. 10,000 lux. And that's specifically, we want blue wavelength light spectrum, which actually our devices emit, which can cause sleep disturbances by keeping us up when we don't want to be too. So there is a balance here. That's that whole circadian rhythm thing. 
Finally, a sustainable approach to meeting your health goals. The Fire Within app, available now on Apple and Android. What you get is an intro to strength training guide, comprehensive exercise library with over 200 exercises, a comprehensive nutrition health transformation course, a six-week meal plan, over 70 recipes, a six-week health redemption strength training course. This is for use with people with equipment and then the same course modified for body weight exercises. You'll also receive a six-week Inferno Abs Core supplemental program. If you download our free app right now, you'll get access to the podcast, exercise and app quick start, recipes, and more. For a $29.99 a month subscription, you'll get the health transformation course, full access to the exercise library, the weighted course, the body weight course, the Inferno abs, recipes, and the podcast. So what are you waiting for? Try it now for free today. Download the Fire Within app. So the next thing we want to talk about with preventing negative effects of seasonal affective disorder is going to be practicing wellness. So a daily routine. I think trying to get your sleep in a routine is the number one thing. But in addition to that, 30 minutes or of exercise, whether it's walking, working out with weights, whatever is really important. And then also don't forget alcohol is a downer. I think our tendency is to be more drawn to alcohol and warm beverages or beverages that heat us up a little, but just keep in mind that's a downer and that could exacerbate the feelings of seasonal affective disorder if you're prone to that. So you may want to put that on a schedule. Most of my clients, we just did a whole episode on alcohol, but try and pick two to three days, usually the weekends where you'll allow one to two drinks, but just don't go crazy all week long. Plus it gives your liver a break. But the sleep cycle is really important. That 30 minutes of exercise is really important. And you can kill two birds with one stone if you get a 30 minute walk in during that 9 a.m. time frame, depending on where you are in the equator. We're in North Carolina. Around 9 a.m. is a pretty good time in the fall and winter to get some sun exposure. Yeah. And one of the reasons why exercise is such a good help for it is that your body releases endorphins. That's great for you. You feel better. But at the same time, you get that increased self-esteem from exercising because you feel better about yourself, helps you sleep better, and it can reduce your anxiety, which is all things that can make seasonal affective disorder more pronounced. Exactly. Now, something we've talked about a little bit is tendency to gravitate towards uh, warm beverages. And it can be easy to over-caffeinate as you start to feel more fatigued because of the light cycles. Starbucks knows this. They oh, make yeah, that yeah. money off of that. Right when fall rolls around, everything turns pumpkin at Starbucks. And my kids are like, Dad, we got to go. <laughs> pumpkin spice is out. Pumpkin spice season. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But uh, so a good alternative after you've had a normal amount of coffee is to switch to things like tea or bone broth would be amazing. And you can season it so it tastes like a delicious soup. But sipping on bone broth, it'll help your immune system, collagen, your yeah. joints. I got into that last fall. It wasn't really because I was seeking the health benefits of bone broth as much as I had gotten into the habit of pouring a glass of bourbon most nights. And I <laughs> wanted to replace that. And I thought maybe it was just sipping that I was addicted to because yeah. I was trying to replace uh, with a better habit like we talk about on this show. Make a better decision. Absolutely. So, and it did. It helped out. And it was delicious. And you could season it with different stuff. At the time, we were growing herbs in our kitchen. So I would just like peel off some of these fresh herbs and throw them in there and throw that thing in the microwave, stir it up and sip that for the next 30 minutes and scratch the itch of what I was looking for, which is that habit of holding something yeah. in my hand. Absolutely. And we also know that in the wintertime, cold and flu season and all that stuff, it's there's a lot more things that get passed around. So that's another reason to gravitate more towards bone broth because it's going to increase the integrity of your immune system, which is the small intestinal line. So there's just tons and tons of good reasons to do that. That's why soups and broths and all this kind of stuff really start to come out more. It's because naturally there's a need for this that helps our species survive. Yeah, there's nothing better than like a warm drink in your hand when it's fall outside, sitting around a fire. Mm. Oh, yeah. Good times. Watch a Hallmark movie. That's right. Wear some big red and black checkered flannel shirt. Moves to a town for, <laughs> and then goes into the baker shop and they fall in love, but there's some kind of com complicated situation. Yeah, it's usually job related. That <laughs> job got tricky and it's going to call her back to the big city before she finds out that... Small town charm is what she really needs. Yep, that's what she needs. 
That's the formula. Yep. Girl wants what she wants, but then gets what she needs. <laughs> it sounds like this never- year on Hallmark. <laughs> <laughs> Where we're gonna play a new movie every fifteen minutes because we got hundreds of them. That's right. I like this meme. It says, "I'm waiting for a reverse Hallmark Christmas movie about a small town girl who realizes her community's politics are terrible, moves to Manhattan, gets a high pressure office job, meets a businessman, and they host a non denominational holiday party at their penthouse." <laughs> <laughs> That reminds me of the plot for that. It was a four Christmases movie with Vince Vaughn and Reese Witherspoon. That's basically the premise of it. They just want to go to Bali and not celebrate Christmas, but they get sucked into four different Christmases. <laughs> so I guess what we're trying to say is watch some Hallmark movies. That'll solve all your health issues. <laughs> it might help with your seasonal affective disorder. <laughs> So to kind of wrap things up here, seasonal affective disorder is definitely a real thing. It's something people experience. We can mitigate those, especially if you're prone to it. I think that one of the best things you can do is get morning sunlight, make sure you have some form of exercise plan and regulate your sleep cycle. Um, we can sip warm beverages to help from over-caffeinating as we become more tired uh, from this lack of light that does have a circadian rhythm effect on us. We definitely want to lower our expectations during the holidays and not expect these hallmark moments that are perfect and realize the food is good enough. The party is good enough. Hey, the in-laws didn't get in a huge massive fight. That's a successful Christmas and that could be okay. It doesn't mean not hope for the best, but just be okay with things if things don't go perfectly planned. If you thought you got the perfect gift and you're like, oh, okay, that's okay. Now, go ahead and have that expectation that could happen so that you're not doubly bummed. Before we wrap up, though, Brandon, I got a riddle for you. Sure. All right. And listeners, see if you can guess the answer. What has 15 actors, five scenes, two writers, and one plot? (laughs) You want me to answer? Yeah. The entire Hallmark Channel. (laughs) 136 Hallmark (laughs) Christmas movies. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope you got a lot of value out of today's episode. If you did... Go check us out at firewithinnf.com and sign up for Refuel, a weekly email with recipes, videos, and tips to stoke the fire within. Also, you can join the Fire Within community by being added to our Facebook group. And don't forget to follow us on social media.